this is heavenly. I have got the farm shop to myself pretty much. Still got a few coronation bits in. I love these little food covers, little hemp food covers. Great if you're dining outside. This is definitely the time to come. 9 a.m. on a Monday morning. So I'd love to know what you guys think about vinegars after listening to the glucose goddess. I'm thinking I need to start having vinegar before my meals to regulate my blood sugar. So I might try one of these. It's a big day. The seedling trays are back at Dalesford. I always have so much luck with these. So we've got some spinach, lots of different lettuces. Ooh, so good. These always perform so well in our garden, so I think I'm gonna have to grab a tray or two. So many lovely bits. Chilies. Oh, well, they're pretty. Ooh, black cherry tomato. Gosh, now's the time to come to the garden center. It is so full. So many amazing bits. Just spotted this beautiful peony for £15, which is pretty good. I'm gonna grab that. Beautiful cut flower selection. These are so stunning. That looks like a little bell-shaped hellebore. Beautiful, gosh. Well, good morning to you my darlings so no surprises where I've started off today I have got a black cherry tomato plant and my tea in my cup holder this morning it's the perfect place to put it so it doesn't tip over so it's Monday morning I have done my double whammy my reformer and then my bar class which was super I've decided not to do my swim and um, slightly extended kind of pampering this morning because I have got a few calls today um i don't know what it is but calls just fill me with dread <laughs> even though it's fun calls like discussing really exciting projects i think it's just that i have to be at my computer at a certain time i think that's all it is um whereas every other thing every other thing that i do it can be quite flexible i don't know if that makes any sense to anybody else but um there we go. I'm listening to a podcast on the way home, as I did on the way here, called Grounding, the Essential Health Discovery of Our Time from um, the Happy Pair podcast. And ever since I briefly mentioned doing a little bit of grounding in a vlog, probably a couple of weeks back now, so many of you have messaged me, whether on here in the comments, on Instagram DMs, or even writing me the most incredibly long and detailed emails about how grounding has helped you guys. And I always love to know the science um, and a little bit more of the intricate details behind these things. So that's what I'm hoping this podcast is gonna give to me. It's not the highest audio quality. It ain't no diary of a CEO, <laughs> that's for sure. But, um, the guy that's phoning in at least, the two that are actually hosting the podcast, their quality is very good. But yeah, I'm really intrigued to find out more about grounding, which is obviously barefoot on the earth. It's meant to be very good for anti-inflammatory. It's meant to be fantastic for boosting your energy levels. Um, something to do with the electrolytes in the earth. This morning I woke up feeling quite anxious, I think because I'd woken up at three o'clock in the morning and I went on my phone stupidly from three until 4 a.m. I hate it when that happens because I know I'll struggle to get up, but it is a lovely day and I want to spend more time out in the garden to further zen myself out so there we go that's the random chat to start the vlog today i'm gonna head home hopefully have time to make a smoothie or a quick breakfast before my first call of the day um and then when they're all out the way hopefully we'll get to start i'm going to collect some herbs to make a nice Herbie frittata, something else that I learnt from that podcast with Jessie from the Glucose Goddess, is the importance, I love how I just get so swept away <laughs> by these trends and things when I listen to them in podcasts, but she was saying 
another great thing to do is have a savory breakfast so before I have my lovely smoothies to have something with eggs so I'm gonna make a nice oh that wasn't very successful a nice herby frittata apparently if you have veggies before anything else then it just yeah helps to maintain your blood sugar levels <laughs> Oh, don't take my word for any of this, by the way. I will leave these podcasts that I'm rambling on about linked down below. feels like an amazing routine while my frittata is frittataring in the aga nearly done i have made my <laughs> someone commented on my instagram when i shared this dales for dupe <laughs> dales for dupe smoothie so this is banana um almond date uh a little bit of peanut butter cinnamon three dates maca powder a little bit of kefir, a little bit of tiger nut milk that I had left, and um, what else? Water to make it liquid. And this is delicious. Ancient and brave cacao and collagen makes it basically turn into a chocolate milkshake. It is so scrumptious, and you might have seen I added a tiny pinch of salt at the end. I'm in love with these little glasses. Finally ditched the IKEA ones we'd had for years. Got these on Amazon. I'll leave them linked down below. Now, I think my frittata will be ready. I'll eat the frittata first because that is full of sugar, <laughs> good sugar, um, but still better to have the savory first. Hello again, my darlings. I appreciate this is a very <laughs> peculiar outfit of the day, but um, I'm not quite ready to get changed <laughs> out of my yoga attire and yet I want to go and do a little bit of gardening. But first, I have got something very exciting to unbox with you. I've had a delivery from Monica Vinada, whose earrings I have been wearing and you guys have been asking about for the last couple of weeks. These are probably one of my oldest pairs of earrings from Monica Vinada. They're just very handy and very pretty and delicate and a little bit um, subtle but also sparkly. I love them, they're like little rectangles. I've got no idea if they still make these, um, but if they do, I'll leave them linked down below. I do have an always on Monica Vinader discount code, so I'll leave that on the screen here. Just bookmark it, save it down, because it's very handy, <laughs> because these pieces are just gorgeous, timeless, elegant um, designs, as you guys know, and um, yeah, it's always handy to nudge someone in the right direction with a discount code, should it be a birthday or special occasion. So I do have some gorgeous new pieces to share with you. I would ordinarily <laughs> like to be looking a little bit more fabulous than I am right now, but you will see me wearing these in lots of upcoming videos with lots of different outfits. So let's do a little unboxing together. I just love their beautiful little boxes. Everything comes in its own little pouch. And I believe this is a little pair of earrings. And something that I absolutely love about Monica Veneda is the ability to mix and match and stack the pieces. So I had stacking in mind with all of these. So first of all, we have got this little twisty ring. It's unlike anything that I have got in my collection. I love the yellow gold. It's funny how we go through phases, isn't it? Sometimes I am a rose gold kind of gal. I've got obviously silver on my wedding rings. Um, sorry, Dickens hair. <laughs> 
just gets everywhere. Um, but for the jewellery that I buy and like my everyday pieces, I would say most of them are yellow gold. Monica Veneta pieces are made from recycled gold and a lot of the pieces are vermeil, which means you have a really good coating of the gold or the, um, or the rose gold on top and they are ultra long lasting. I probably shouldn't admit this, but I actually don't take my jewelry off when I'm in the shower or when I'm doing my workouts most of the time. And to be honest, that is just a testament to the quality of the pieces. What do we have here? Oh, gorgeous, okay. Just when I think that my bracelet collection is complete, they bring out this very delicate, very, very pretty, little bracelet. It's one bracelet, it looks like two. It has got a pearl row and it has got a gold row and then they kind of switch in the middle. So it's so pretty. I think this is just going to be the most gorgeous thing for wearing on holiday. Um, it's very beachy. It's very Ibiza vibes. I wonder where I'll be in the world when you guys are watching this video. Hmm just realised I'm definitely going to be in the UK. <laughs> oh dear. Beautiful, I can already tell this is just going to be the loveliest layering piece with any watches or any favourite bracelets that you like to wear on a regular basis. I'm going for all the little mini ones first, all the mini boxes. <gasps> Stunning. Oh my gosh, okay. We have another beautiful ring to add to the collection. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Lots of little different gemstones on a wiggly, wiggly ring. So I feel like this is going to be quite a comfortable one to wear. You could most definitely layer it up on top of a ring like this. Oh, I don't know how I want to wear it. I think I want to wear it underneath this ring. Actually, I quite like it alongside on my ring finger on my right hand. I find it so hard to, to model rings because hands are quite veiny, aren't they? Well, at least mine are, but that is beautiful and very comfortable because it's got that little bit of wiggly, wiggliness to it. I'm going to call it the wiggly ring. I think, oh my gosh, these are stunning. I think that I have been wearing Monica, jewel, Monica Vinanda jewellery for 10 years, at least. I think the whole of mine and Charlie's relationship, because I remember I first heard about the brand when I used to work in the Reese flagship store while I was still at uni, and as much as I pretend that, or like to think that I'm still a little spring chicken, that was a long time ago. <laughs> so next we have got these stunning, gosh, they look illuminescent, is that a word, luminescent? Is that malachite? It almost looks like a little jade stone, but how fabulous, even with hair pulled back. Imagine you're in Ibiza and you have just got out the ocean, you've got sea salt in your hair and you've pulled your hair back into a bun, you're wearing an elegant white beach dress and then just this pop of colour. I feel like it's bringing out my eyes, <laughs> bringing out the green of my eyes. That is beautiful. I love that. Oh, it's making me so excited for summer. Ooh. Such a treat, so many gorgeous pieces here. My goodness me, I love. Oh, oh my gosh, guys. Just when I thought the green earrings were the creme de la creme tip of the iceberg, look at this. We have got a tennis chain bracelet. I'm gonna wear it, oh. <laughs> look at that combo. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh, that is the dream combo. This is officially how my wrists look from now on. Wow, I love it. So delicate, and uh, that green color. That is stunning. This is officially my new favorite jewelry combo. But alas, there's more. We have got, ooh, these are funky. Okay, these are for those days or nights when you want something a little bit funky, a little bit like you want your friends to be like, ooh, like your earrings, Joes. Cool earrings, Joes. It's that kind of vibe. Because they will definitely, people will definitely be asking about these. It's kind of like 
a cartoon C shape or a cashew nut. I'm going to call them my cashew nut earrings. They've probably got a really elegant name that Monica Vinegar have given them, like, I don't know, the, the swirl. <laughs> but I'm going to call them my little cashew nut earrings. Wow. Again, these are giving, giving me Balearic vibes. Ibiza is a Balearic island. I mean, at this point, it's no secret that we've booked a trip to Ibiza next week. <laughs> I feel like that's all that's on my mind right now. Ooh, they are funky. Something about the fact that you can't see the, the bit that goes through your ear, it makes it look like they're floating. That is so cool. Oh my gosh. My Ibiza jewelry wardrobe is complete and yet there's more. There's more, there's more. Give me, give me more. Oh, so pretty. Oh my gosh, if you are feeling the delicate bracelet vibes at the moment, it doesn't get much more delicate than this. Can you see if my eye stops attracting the camera? This is a very simple little snake chain. Not snake chain, actually. Simple chain with a little diamond in the middle. Oh, and it's one of these very clever bracelets where you can actually lengthen it or shorten it with one of these clever little nodules. Okay. Question is, am I going to be able to wear all of these at one go, at one time, or are they going to completely get tangled? I really love that you can pull this to be the exact tightness of your wrist. Do you see what I've done there? So that is my exact wrist tightness, whereas the other two are a bit more dangly, they flop up and down, <laughs> um, but that one just stays in situ. What a stack, if I do say so myself. Stack goals. And of course, these all pair just stunningly with any old or classic, oh, beautiful, <gasps> stunning, um, other Monica Vanilla bits you might have in your collection. They do pearls very, very well. You might be familiar with my kind of like basket weave hoop with the dangling pearl, which I wear all the time at Christmas. Well, these are much more subtle. This is like a little mattified mini medallion with a hanging pearl. Again, fabulous for holiday when you just want something a little bit elevated but still very wearable for every day. To be honest, if I put these in on day one of a holiday, chances are I just would never, oh my gosh. Okay, that's my new everyday earring sorted. Yeah, I'd never take them out again. Have to remind myself to change into the hoops or the beautiful green danglies in the evenings, but for every day. Ooh, just noticed on this side the pearl is higher and on this side the gold is higher. How lovely. Okay, you'll be seeing me wearing these forever, <laughs> basically, for the rest of my life. It goes on and on and on and on. No, it doesn't. You put an empty one back in the bag. Right, last but by no means least, I hope, because I've forgotten what this is. Aha. This is kind of the ring version of that last bracelet. Very simple, very subtle. It is a simple gold band, can you see, with the gemstone in the middle. Look how gorgeous these rings look. Oh, I love them. Ooh. Sorry about that growl, that was a little bit weird, wasn't it? What do we think? I quite like it stacked up on top. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this jewellery collection is getting me so excited for holidays. I feel like a new, a new jewellery stack on holiday really makes you feel like the bee's knees. That is Stun Arillo. Look at that. I love how it just stays there and sparkles all day long. And then it's like, oh, hello, there's more. The party continues. The party's going on down here. <laughs> I've officially gone a little bit mad. Um, but how stunning are these pieces? The quality is chef's kiss. Kish. <laughs> chef's kiss. <laughs> The quality of these pieces is just gorgeous. I have many a Monica Veneta piece in my wardrobe that I've had for many years. And as I said, I'm not the most careful with them, um, but they've lasted me so well and their timelessness is what makes them a truly wonderful investment. So yes, you'll be seeing me wearing these pieces for the foreseeable. So I really hope you enjoy that little unboxing. 
I'm in love with these new pieces. Everything will be linked down below and don't forget to use the discount code. I believe it's JosieMB20 and that will get you 20% off your Monica Vinader order. And yes, there we go. Okay, my darlings, um, let's get outside. I will not remove my rings because I'm gonna put gloves on. Let's go and plant my salad leaves. Put in. You're a bully. <laughs> oh, mummy, we love the sunshine. We love the sunshine. Okay, we are in the greenhouse, my happy place, and this is the salad tray that I got from Delsford earlier. So I don't want to hang around. I'm going to plant it out straight away. Um, so we've got some little corianders, we've got the kales, spinach, rainbow chard, and two different kinds of curly lettuce. Didn't grow this kind from seed this year. I grew the regular leaf, not the twizzly leaf. So that's amazing. This is how mine is looking. Might pop some more of that out as well. Gosh, I've got lots that can go out actually. My kale's looking really good. My peas are looking sensational. My beans. I do like to wait a little bit longer for the beans because, gosh, look at that. Um, I normally wait till after Chelsea Flower Show. I'm going to put some sweet peas out as well. So let's uh, grab the dibber. Oh, I also bought this from Dalesford. Pionia Festiva Maxima. Lovely. Giant peony. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so what I like to do is grab a trug and pop everything in it that I need. So I'm going to need a dibber. If I'm doing my peas, I'm going to need some string and skyzors um, <laughs> and my gloves. Right, let's go. Okay, so this is where I'm going to pop my bits in, at least the um, lettuce leaves. I'll pop you on a little time lapse so you can see them going in. And if you wonder what I'm doing on my phone, I'm going to try and do a little YouTube short or TikTok um, on my little seedling tray. difference from a few minutes ago so if you're very observant you will notice we have got three new kale plants and I've popped them under the cloches I've got a feeling it was actually butterflies that got them last year and I'm not sure these cloches will help save them but they've got two chances then we've got a row of spinach and the lettuces and I'm very excited to eat them I think some of these little lettuces look at Dickie by the way my little head gardener. These lettuces are almost ready to pick, but what is definitely ready, and we'll have some with our dinner tonight, obviously the pak choy, the Asian greens, and look how succulent and fabulous these leaves are. Ooh, could almost get me excited about salad. Almost. <laughs> so next, I'm gonna go back to the greenhouse and get some sweet peas, bring them out. I want that cloud to go away so I can get some sun on my body. And then, um, get the sweet peas in the ground. Well, this is quite exciting. My second radish of the season that I've just pulled up. I pulled one up yesterday um, on our little walk around the garden and it was very tiny and very peppery. This one is longer. They always have these tiny little holes. I don't really know what they're from, but they certainly don't bother me and they most definitely don't stop me from eating it. I'm gonna give this a quick rinse under the garden tap and have a little afternoon snack. <laughs> Second snack of the afternoon. I've just gone inside and had 
a few almonds. Yummy, should have had this first, according to the glucose goddess. <laughs> really peppery. <laughs> I feel like I look like an actual rabbit. That is so good. These are the perfect size for um, crudité boards. Oh, that reminds me. I actually need to plant some more radish seeds. Otherwise they'll all come up at once and then I won't have any more for three weeks. got a little bit cloudy so I'm going to come in and do a little bit more email admin and I thought I'd show you the bits that I got from Dalesford this morning so I picked up a couple of these little food covers really perfect if you are entertaining outside or even just here in the kitchen just to keep any little flies or, <laughs> or anything off your food I got one of each shape depending on which serving platter we're using and then as I mentioned earlier um, about the vinegar I thought this sounded quite nice with turmeric, ginger, horseradish. So you're meant to pop a tablespoon of this in with some water or a tea before your meal and it helps with your blood sugar levels. This is a brand called Paste and it's a Pad Thai stir fry sauce. I thought with all the veggies that I'm growing in the garden, it'd be lovely to just have some tasty sauce to cook them with and have with some rice or some quinoa. And then the lavender fabric conditioner is just delicious. Delicious smelling, I should say. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a treat, but it really does make all of our laundry smell incredible. I can't remember if I showed you this little area area <laughs> in the last vlog, probably at the end, but it looks so lovely. The angelica flower, some little, um, must be a type of erigeron, single stem tulip. This is actually from our horseradish and some, what do you call it, herb forgotten the name of it. You guys know what this is. Lovage. And then my questionable banana and oat muffins. Got lots of questions about this on Instagram. It's from Goop, but you might remember we got it when we first moved in, so not sure if it's still available. Anyway, I'm going out into the garden. It's now half five. Just finished doing a few more emails. The sun's come back out, so let's get back outside. I know that you're my children. Oh, thank you, Dexie because you're both sun worshippers like your mother and father. Hello, Snoot Magoot. What are you looking at, Lynn? Hello, Mr. Snooty Patooty. Wisteria update. It's coming. It's coming. Viburnum update. They are slowly turning white. I love them. I'm so glad that we got this. They're actually some of my favourite little blooms to add into flower displays as well. They look like they should be part of the hydrangea family, don't they? Gorgeous. Well, this is the first time I've done this this year, but I'm heading into the kitchen garden with my little basket and I'm going to pick some bits to have with our dinner. I've snuffled the odd bit, you know, but this is the first time I'm coming down for a loot that will determine what I have for dinner. First of all, some of this juicy lamb's lettuce. Such a good health. 
helper you are. Right, I think we should also pick these first mange two pods because the more you pick, the more they grow back. This is very exciting. First mange two of the season. Got a grand total of five mange two. <laughs> None will go to waste. And then I'm actually going to pick some of these little radishes like I did earlier. I think there might be a few more. Still tiny, but that'll be tasty. Ooh. Why do they get these little bite marks on them? What is eating them? Is it the worms? Yuck. Well, doesn't this look wonderful for our dinner? I'm going to do a courgette and cashew stir fry with some rice. Got lots of spinach, some onions, some chilli, some lime, and my little additions from the kitchen garden. I'm gonna wash, obviously, the radish. Well, I'm going to wash everything. Slice up some pak choy as well. I think this should be rather scrummy. probably took me about half an hour pretty easy just turmeric in the rice and then um, roasted the cashews and then did oil in the pan onion courgette chili uh, hoisin sauce courgette I already said that didn't I pak choy leaves and spinach leaves and then a little bit of lime zest stirred in with the rice um, and some coriander chopped up on top so it should be nice and sweet because of the hoisin and yet that rice looks really yummy because of the turmeric so I am excited to dig in. Well that was a delicious dinner and now I'm taking my pudding outside to enjoy out here in the sunshine. We had our dinner <clears throat> down on that table too. I've got a nice bowl of organic yogurt with chia seeds, Brazil nuts, pecans, sunflower seeds, my random seed mixture, goji berries and honey. And oh, I just love it. So delicious. Yes? Come on then, my boom boom. milk cappuccino and bird song to start the day. I have done so much reading about oat milk and I know it's not good for me <laughs> but it's one thing that I just cannot give up. Look at this gorgeous morning light coming through. Oh, there she is.
freshly showered and dressed and makeup applied after a fantastic workout this morning. I think having, we had the gate open so I could see that beautiful view in the field and it was great, a lovely start to the day. So, as you can see, we're in the kitchen and I'm gonna do one of my kitchen experiments once again. Just really enjoying playing around and attempting making things. Maybe one in five of the things that I create is delicious. The dinner last night was very delicious, I must say. Definitely gonna recreate that, even more so when we've got more in the kitchen garden. But today, this morning, I went into the fridge to find some of my little seeded Biona seed bread things to have with my uh, savoury breakfast of a herby frittata, which is my new favourite thing <laughs> for breakfast. And alas, I did not have any, so I thought, I've got seeds, I'm gonna try making, not seed bread, but seeded crackers. And I think it's quite easy. So this could be a fun little thing to do. I found a couple of recipes online. One of the recipes includes Parmesan. So that could be a delicious option. I think this is one of those things where you can do various different methods. You can do pure seed, you could do a herby version, or you can do a cheesy version. So, today I'm gonna try the simple version, you'll be pleased to know. So I've got sunflower seeds. Darling, can you help me um, identify these seeds? Small brown seeds? Linseed. Linseed, good, that's on all the recipes. Golden um, linseed. Golden linseed. Don't know what they're called, just brown linseed, regular linseed, chia seed. Yeah, I know that one. Sunflower seed. Really, they're quite Ooh. small. No, that's sunflower seeds. One of these are hemp seeds. Ooh. But I don't know what the other one is. Well, I thought these were pumpkins. Spelt. Anyway. Hang on. <clears throat> I need to know. <laughs> he needs to know. Uh, the most important no, thing. No, they are sunflower. Yeah, they're sunflower seeds. Oh, they are. <clears throat> so those are sunflower, and I think they are as well. Okay. Well, the most important thing are these. The smallest are the most important. Um, chia seeds, because as you'll know, if you've ever eaten chia seeds and then checked your reflection an hour later, if you get them stuck in your teeth, they often go a little bit gooey. Um, and it's that goo that is gonna hold together the seed bread. So I'm going to weigh out, I found a recipe on a website called moorlandseater.com um, and light, crispy and delicious, grain-free and gluten-free, perfect accompaniment to dips, soups or cheese, but I'm gonna have mine. <coughs> with a herby frittata for breakfast. <coughs> this will be such a good thing to put in your children's lunch boxes as well. <coughs> so, shush please. This recipe does include dried herbs, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll pick some herbs from the garden and dry them for next time. So I'm gonna do 65 grams of pumpkin seeds, 65 grams of sunflower, 50 of chia, 40 of sesame. Oh, I do have sesame somewhere. 20 of flax, a little bit of salt. You can put in a little bit of garlic granules and then 175 ml of cold water. I'm excited. And then basically you leave it to soak for 20 minutes so that the chia can go goopy and then you bake for one hour at 150 degrees. So I'll check the different Arga areas. Um, oh, I'm excited. Let's get cracking. I was trying to think of a seed pun. Can't think of any. They're all too seedy. <laughs> I followed the instructions on that website and this is my seed mix so you can see seal the seeds in there and now we are adding 175 ml of cold water yum I'm gonna give that a little bit of a stir and then we leave it for 20 minutes for the chia seeds to work their magic should go gloopy and then we'll pop it on some baking sheets Hopefully, this is a winner winner chicken dinner. Yum. Do you know what? I like things salty, so I'm going to add a little bit more salt. I feel like half a pinch is not enough. Pretty good size pinch. <laughs> oh, I can already feel this thickening. Alexa, set timer for 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes has passed. I've popped one of my little. Um, 
pre-made, pre-cut baking sheets in the bottom of a baking pan. And now I'm gonna spread this out as evenly as I can. Okay, I probably could have used a slightly bigger pan actually and spread this a bit thinner, but I quite like the idea of a fairly thick, chewy cracker. So I'm gonna pop this in the bottom left of the Argo, which is about 150 for an hour. But after 45 minutes, I am gonna, I am going to take it out and add a little bit of Parmesan to a little strip on the side because I think that'll be delicious. Alexa, set timer for one hour. Oh, that's a little bit dark. It's a shame whenever I have my back to the window, I just look like a silhouette. But anyway, my next <laughs> little experiment in the kitchen today, I've got an hour for that to be in the Arga and I'm wondering what I can do with myself in that hour. So, um, of course I could go upstairs and do some work, but I'd rather do something fun. So I've got my milky plant machine out again. It lives in the pantry. And I've only ever tried making oat milk in here before. I have been mentioning peppered throughout this vlog and last vlog that I am, well, I have been trying to wean myself off oat milk for the whole year. She says having literally just had an oat milk <laughs> cappuccino this morning. It's so tasty. I can't stop having it, but I know that it's not that good for you. Um, I've been listening to the Glucose Goddess podcast a lot lately and she describes it as starch water because it literally is. Oats are just starch and it's just watery starch and then oatly that tastes so good and I probably won't ever give up because it's one of life's little pleasures but it's also full of like sugary not so good ingredients as well. So I'm not saying I'm going to give that up because it is my little treat if it makes you happy in the mornings to have an oat milk latte then do it but I am also looking to have alternatives available and if I can make them at home then that's always the best because you know exactly what's gone into it. So nuts are much better for you than oats from a glucose level. I think I want to start a new little series on the blog um, with all of these little kind of wellness things that I'm picking up and learning and not proclaiming to be the expert in them at all because obviously I am not um, but just sharing my learnings, sharing the podcast I've been listening to ranging from gut health to grounding <laughs> to my learnings on nut milk and blood sugar levels I feel like this year has been, 2023 has been the year for me of wellness maybe it's feeling like I want to be feeling and looking my best for the wedding. That's probably what spurred it on the most. But I've been really enjoying just educating myself, listening to so many different podcasts. That has been my main way of learning. But I think that my skin is the best it's ever been. I think my body is probably looking <laughs> the best it has done in a very long time. Um, and I feel great. I feel like my energy levels are good and I'm putting, trying to put into practice a lot of the things that I've been learning so hopefully you guys are enjoying learning along with me and let me know if you would like a kind of hub on the blog where I can use it as a little bit of a diary maybe we'll do wellness Wednesdays and I'll share a different topic every week so if you hear me rambling about something leave a comment down below and be like Josie I'd love this to be a wellness Wednesday some weeks it might be a recipe some weeks it might be oh I've been learning about grounding this week and just chatting about that so yeah, anyway, I'm gonna make a walnut and cashew milk for the first time in my milky plant machine. You don't need one of these. You can use a blender, but then you need to strain. I just find it so easy to do my nut milks in this or my oat milk in the past. Um, and to be honest, if I didn't have this, I probably wouldn't bother because I'm quite lazy. It's a very big futuristic machine. Um, but if you have somewhere to store it or you don't mind having something that looks like a spacecraft in your kitchen, then go for it. I think they're currently on a waiting list because they got very popular. But yeah, what I'm saying is you don't need one of these, but it's much easier to have one of these. Okay, stop blathering, woman, and let's start making the oat milk. Okay, I just ran a cleaning program, so... It's clean. I clean it after each use, but I also think it's worth cleaning before each use as well. 
So, I'm gonna do two tablespoons of cashew nuts. Cashew nuts make your nut milk creamy. And then a recipe that I found said 40 mil of walnuts. I don't know what 40 mil of walnuts looks like. Well, I know what 100 mil looks like. I'm just gonna do a handful. 40 mil, maybe, possibly, who knows. One date without the stone, Boop. and a pinch of salt. Okay, lid on. Bottle in situ, and let's go. be loud. Well, well, there we go. It looks lovely and creamy. I can see already a little bit of separation, um, but that does not bother me hugely because I will always give it a little bit of a shake before making it. Um, oh, I'm looking forward to having this. A little bit of this froth. I will try frothing it. Obviously frothing last time didn't work, but apparently the cashews really do help. Um, and I'm gonna try using the frother on the coffee machine this time. So I'm gonna pop some of that in my after lunch. I mean, my frittata is gonna end up being lunch because it's already 11 o'clock. Yeah, I'll have that with some coffee later. I shall report back. Now you do get, I won't be able to do this probably with one hand. Not in there, in here. Yeah, you do get all the fiber here. Um, and I'm pretty sure the fiber is good for you. So I might actually stick it in. Oops. My smoothie, is that a bit weird? Seems too good to waste. Yeah, I'm gonna stick that in my smoothie. Right, darlings, this has been in the Argo for about 40 minutes. It's starting to pretty much look quite done, actually. So I've just grated some Parmigiano Oregano in the thumb mix. Don't worry, I'm not going to use all of this, but I am just going to sprinkle one side with Parmesan, because if there's ever an option to add cheese to something, I will take it. And this will just melt down for the final 20 minutes of cooking. Excuse me, Dixie! Excuse me, my Dexie. Darling, what have you just been delivered? Two more kettlebells, mate. Question, what if the postman is not strong enough to lift those I mean, boxes? I'll be honest, uh, yeah, I, I, I think these are potentially quite dangerous for delivery guys. I don't know, there was a warning to say it was heavy, but this yeah. is 32 kilograms. Whoa, it's heavy. and that's lifting it by the bar as well. Yeah, it's much so, harder to lift it without. So anyway, this is our favorite brand, Aleiko. It's a Swedish brand. Mm -hmm. It is expensive, but it's what we've got in our gym. Yeah. Um, it's the best, best brand you can get in your gym. Yeah. Shout out to Ben and Robin, who advised us to get Aleiko way back when, when we designed the gym. Mm -hmm. This is what they need at Bamford Club. If anyone's watching from Bamford Club, <laughs> get rid of your kettlebells and get these, because these are way better. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we've we've got 124 already, but sign of progression with PT. Yeah. I now need two 24s. Mm -hmm. So we've ordered a second one. And he said it would be useful, but I don't think I'm quite ready for this yet, to be able to do goblet squats with a 32. Whoa. Yeah, like that. Well, I'll um, probably be doing goblet squats with a 24 soon, but I yeah, do need already, a 16 for my kettlebell we'll swings we'll get you a 16. and my squats. We'll get you a 16, but they're such, they're just really good quality. Yeah. I mean, they're expensive. They're probably about, that was about 120 pounds. Holy guacamole. But you think how solid they are. Yeah. And we'll never need to buy no. them again. That's they it, will done. survive a mass destruction. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Kind of a strange delivery. Thank you to the postman. <laughs> Okay, my darlings, the seed bread is going to be seed bread, seed cracker. Oh, it's ready. Alexa, timer off. Ooh. Yes. Yum, yum, yum. There we go. Hope that can sit on the cooling rack. I'm sure that'll be fine. So in a second, I'm gonna lift the corners of the baking paper and let it cool on the wire rack. And while it cools, 
I'm going to make my herby frittata. What is the difference between a frittata and an omelette? Is it... Maybe frittatas normally have potatoes. I'm not sure. I'm sure there's a technical answer. But I am going to do my version of a frittata. Because it's my lunch, I'm going to do four eggs, herbs from the kitchen garden. I'm going to do a little smattering of chilli flakes. Um, let's tilt you down, seeing as I'm not trying to my face anyway. Salt, olive oil, a little bit of mustard. Fancy something a bit savoury. I'm going to do a bit of garlic in there as well. If I had a bit of cream or creme fraiche, I'd probably stick that in there too. But I do have some feta left. Always a treat to add feta to your frittata. So I'm going to start by slicing the garlic. eating our brunch I should say so I'm going to start by cracking up my seed item if this is a success I'm just straight away this afternoon gonna make another batch because you can just keep them in an airtight container I'm just gonna do this quite roughly it did say you could score lines on this with a knife just before it goes in the oven to make it crack evenly but I quite like I quite like an uneven crack <laughs> Oh dear. Right, I'm going to keep the two or three parmesan bits separate. Cheesy crack. Oh, perfection. Just following the natural crack. It's amazing how this is just seeds and water, and yet it's bound together thanks to the um, chia. Nice crack. can't resist a little nibble. Surely it's just going to taste like seeds. Yeah, but I love seeds, so that's amazing. Mmm. Very nice. Mmm. I just had a bit that had quite a big um, pumpkin seed on it, and that was extra delicious. So I think I'm going to go quite heavy on the pumpkin seeds next time. Okay, I'm going to pop this in the agar for the last five minutes so that the brown, the top can go a little bit brown and more cooked. And just like last night, I'm taking a trip to the kitchen garden for some salad leaves. I think that will go quite nicely with what I am cooking. Oh, nice bit of bird, bird turd. I shall avoid. Be honest that's probably enough Ooh. take a little bit of the red oak perfect salad for one My mouth is watering and I am really excited to dig into this. So we've got a chili and feta herby omelette. Did stick a little bit to the bottom of the pan but I'm sure I can use a different pan next time. I've got my salad leaves from the kitchen garden with Lucy's honey and mustard golden dressing and then my homemade seed breads, seed crackers. Yum! This looks and smells delicious. I'm gonna dig in and I shall report back. That was delicious and very filling. I'm very full, but I have got a craving for something sweet. So this is my banana, cinnamon, date, and kefir smoothie that I made for breakfast yesterday. I'm gonna add in the fiber from my milk, a splash of the milk, and also I'm gonna throw in a coffee as well. So it's gonna be a nice pick-me-up smoothie for my post-lunch treat. go, 
my post lunch coffee banana date cinnamon <laughs> Charlie talking to Dexter daddy let me have free rain please lovely smoothie and I also added in a <laughs> teaspoon of this dirty chaga I think it's like a mushroom powder I don't know but we've got it in the cupboard so I thought I would give it a try Charlie has done the power-up version of my lunch would you like to explain what's in your it's not the most tiny bowl? presentation, but it's a real combination of things. So I've got your frittata. Mm -hmm. I have got some spinach from the garden. Yep. Um, I have some chicken that was left over from the other night. Yep. I have some asparagus that was from Dalsford, which has just been pan fried. And then I've got some sorrel, which I grew. Mm -hmm. And some just random lettuce leaves that you've grown, mate. Lambs, lettuce, and... I grow the pretty Ooh. veg, though, look. Look at that. Look at the colour. You wait, mate. You wait till my courgettes are out. Right. Then you'll be eating your words, quite literally. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm doing all the washing up. Okay, my darlings, we decided we needed to get out of the house for a little bit. We've spent a lot of time at our laptops Ooh. today. <laughs> so we have come to <laughs> the least surprising place. I feel like we are such stuck records. We need to find somewhere else. Well, the part of the reason is um, Max who runs the garden shop here is awesome and I message him now and I say have you got any of these plants in so for example today aquilegia is what I wanted to get right so he sorted them we do love he's other garden centers you up no I'm really excited for when um, oh here we go the best the top dog James the top dog here he is oh he's so what cute. a legend <laughs> we should we should tell him <laughs> I have not been in here for a little while I thought I'd come and have a look at the new clothing it's always beautifully decorated in here I think their new designs are rather gorgeous. Some inspo for wedding foliage, just a load of branches in an urn. And it looks brilliant, gorgeous. And then viburnum, delphinium, alliums, and eucalyptus in a vase. Looks great. Smells gorgeous in here. Probably because of these. Yeah, just look how simple that is. All the branches in an urn. It's not that great, it's yeah, just branches. Awesome. Should we get our trees cut just before the wedding? <laughs> and stick the foliage. Yeah, looks fantastic. Um, ooh, look at all the pink bits. Lovely. I saw a gorgeous white dress on the Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. <gasps> look at this. Oh, ruffles. So pretty. Gorgeous. I feel like this is deja vu from the beginning of the vlog, but here we are again in the season section. Asparagus, yum, yum, yum. Ooh, I hate to say it, Dalesford, but my rhubarb looks better than this. Mm -hmm. Right, what do I need? Courgettes. Okay, let's see what's in the Dalesford crackers that I can put in mine. Wheat flour, uh, linseed, rosemary salt and olive oil. I shall give that a go next time. Popping up on our favourite curries while they're on offer. Fantastic. Oh look, the apricot as well. Here is a big display with some angelica in it, a bit more inspo, with branches, some, what should we call it, verbena? Not verbena, that one. Alliums and cow parsley, beautiful. loot in the back of the Defender. It looks very wild. I actually love it. Love how it looks. And then all of our curries might have one of those for dinner this evening. So I'm going to try recreating one of the flower displays that I saw in the shop. This is my little flower haul and I think I'm going to get these in some water then I'm going to dry out again and get loads of cow parsley 
and see what beautiful displays we can make for free inspired by these ones i just saw inside. i left my camera in the car but we are back again um so yes a very successful loot from dalesford everything is so pretty i could just quite happily spend all of my money on the flowers from here but i love to come for inspo as well charlie's just picking up a few last bits and then we're gonna head home and i'm very excited for a wholesome afternoon of flower arranging back home again very quick little dalesford haul <laughs> um just before we put it all away this is obviously just the bits from the farm shop you've just seen the boot of the defender full of blooms and flowers so we've got a nice pumpernickel bread really nice with eggs in the mornings Said eggs, six free range organic Dalesford eggs times two, blueberries, in season asparagus, purple asparagus and green asparagus. Do they taste different? Not really. No. I don't believe them to taste different, they just look different obviously. It's nice to have different colours on your plate. Uh, a nice apricot jam, is that just for with toast or with your yogurt? Yeah, I just thought it would be nice toast. You could easily have that with some yogurt mm. um, or with my overnight oats and stuff. You could indeed. Lovely Bamford lip balm, hand and body lotion top up. And then I was complaining of an aching muscle in Pilates yesterday and Alex recommended this. It's the organic nighttime body cream with cannabis. So it's like a CBD, hopefully nice and calming for my muscles. And I think we're going to have these for our dinner tonight. We always grab them when they are 30% off. The apricot uh, spiced chicken with apricot tagine with chickpeas. They are so yummy. It's like a really easy curry to have at home. And then we've got all the plants outside, which Charlie is going to position while I go and get some cow parsley. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. Look at that little bunny rabbit, Tay Tay. If there's lots of it, chop it. Yep, as long as it's on not on private land. Yep, so we're on a public footpath and there's loads of it. But even then I think take care and I think I was just saying to you and also, I think we've deliberately come right down off the beaten track to do it rather than at the top of the footpath where it looks really pretty. Exactly. Considering Smithers. Yep. Okay, we've got our loot, cow parsley and a few little it's a foliage. Oh, Always worth bringing your secateurs on an evening doggy walk. One day I will fall into the hedge doing this. <laughs> Spot the plonker! Uh -huh. <laughs> Lovely stuff. We're back home again. If you guys don't remember the um, foraged flower arranging that I did cue the dog barking <laughs> last year, then I will give you a little reminder as to how I do it in my little um, trough and anything that looks a little bit like the um, Quidditch World Cup. Is that the Quidditch World Cup? Uh, no, the Triwizard Cup. Anything that looks a little bit like the Triwizard Cup in its shape is good for this. I really like at Dalesford how they have the old metal urns. We've got this lovely bunny urn which lives in the entrance hall, so that is perfect. And then, as we said in the field, anything that grows plentifully on public land just snip away within reason. So we love cow parsley and then always grab a little bit of foliage uh, if you like. Otherwise, a pure cow parsley display also looks gorgeous. And it's very easy to do and anything with a bit of blossom and if you are going to get something with blossom have a look for something with quite a few little closed buds as well so that you don't lose all the blooms after this set of flowers is finished and then i'm going to film a little youtube short so you might have seen this already but as always i recommend putting some chicken wire in your vase and i just reuse this bit all the time because these little metal um the metal wire just acts as a little bit of a base for the blooms and it means that they basically stay where you put them and it helps to create a really gorgeous shape. That's a tip that I actually learnt at Dalesford when I did their floristry course a couple of years ago and that course is what really got me started on loving doing my flower arranging. So I'm going to pop you guys on a little tripode while I do some 
beautiful arranging. Well, it's an hour or so since I finished the flower display. Lala and her friend Izzy just came over for a little kitchen garden tour and g and in the sunshine. But here is the display. I'm thrilled with how this has turned out. I love the green and white, but with just a tiny little hint of that soft purple of the delphiniums. 80% foraged and just the pretty blooms in the middle from Dalesford. So this entire thing cost me around 30 pounds, which I'm pretty chuffed with. Hopefully it'll last well. We've got the little flocks in there, which I bought. Um, these, which look like a cow parsley, but I don't think they are. Um, I didn't add any angelica in here, but I did add some angelica and some cow parsley and some of my horseradish flower into a separate display, which I've taken over to La Luz. So yeah, very, very pleased with this. And I'm now going to pop it in its place in the entrance area. See, it's getting quite dark already, but it really is so striking. I love to see this. Just as a little glimpse through the hallway, and then as you've come into the house, it's the first thing that you see. Oh, I love it. I think this might be one of my favorite ones ever, actually. This is definitely a great start to my foraging season. <laughs> I'm gonna apologize right now, but you're probably gonna see me doing a foraged display like this in every other vlog, but I so encourage you to try it out yourself. Obviously make sure that what you're picking you are allowed to pick. I don't want to be to blame for half of the uh, English countryside hedgerow disappearing illegally, but um, do you know what? I think I might do a blog post on correct foraging etiquette. Although maybe I won't because then I'll be <laughs> held accountable. But um, yeah, love this. I think it's perfect size for this room as well. And it puts the uh, circular entrance hall table to good use. Gorgeous, wild and wonderful. Just how we like things. Lovely. Yamarillo.